Hey, aloha, and welcome to Stan Energy Man. I'm Stan Osterman from the Hawaii Center for Advanced Transportation Technologies. It's hard to get that out on a long, after a long week. <laughs> it's been a tough week this week. Lots going on. And the first thing I'd like to do before we get into introducing our guests is talk a little bit about uh, going to the VIP uh, reception at last night's Hawaii Auto Show. I'd like to thank Dave Rolfe for putting that big event on at the Convention Center. It's awesome. So right on the screen you see uh, Pastor Ke uh, Cordell Kekoa, Kahu Cordell Kekoa, uh, from Kamehameha Schools doing the blessing and un unbuckling the ceremonial seatbelt at the opening with all the auto dealers there. And uh, there's a, it was a great, great um, evening, uh, a lot of cool cars over there. So if you get a chance to get the family out to the convention center this weekend, if you want to see anything from antique cars to uh, the fastest things made in Europe right now, Ferraris and Maseratis and everything else, they're all there. Big vans, big trucks, little cars, SUVs, you name it, and they're, they're just all sitting there waiting for you to check them out. A lot of folks there uh, were excited last night to see all the new models, including, of course, my favorite, the Toyota Mirai, which is a hydrogen vehicle, of course. <laughs> it's got to be my favorite, but our guest today... Our real special guest, especially for Ms. Rachel James and I, who work in, at HCAT, because we've also been working with some young folks from the Hawaii, from the Hawaii Center, uh, excuse me, the Center for Tomorrow's Leaders, which is a non-for-profit here in town that takes some uh, high school students and brings them on board, and, and they get to do some different things like uh, work with HCAT folks and other things, so they'll, they'll fill in the blanks there. But uh, today we have um, three of the young folks. We can only put two at a time on the screen. So <laughs> starting off, we have um, Kylie, yes. and we have Giorgio from Center for Tomorrow's Leaders. And uh, thank you for being here. We thank really appreciate it. Us. And uh, <laughs> I'm glad you got a chance to join us. And let's talk a little bit about what you went through over the past couple months. So uh, first of all, Kylie, why don't you tell us a little bit about you know, how the program, how, how you got into the program, a little bit about where you went to school or where you go to school and uh, where you plan to go to school and things like that. And then we'll ask Georgia right. to give his two cents. <laughs> All right. Um, well, I actually heard about CTL over KSK. So not like how everyone else heard about it. But, um, yeah, my mom and I were driving. We heard about it, and I just decided to apply. And luckily mm -hmm. I got an interview, and here mm -hmm. I am. Great. Um, but, yeah, um, I go to Kamehameha Schools. I'm a junior there. And um, I'm still not too sure where I want to go to college, but... Hopefully, somewhere on the East Coast, fingers crossed. But you yeah. want to be far, far away? Well, not necessarily, but you know, it's something different. So, okay. we'll see. Okay, and what do you think you're going to major in? Um, I'm interested in being in, in the OBGYN. Okay. So, hopefully, well, that all plans out. <laughs> yeah. Okay, good. And Jude Giorgio, where do you go to school? Um, so, I go to McKinney High School. Okay. And uh, I'm uh, currently a senior. So, for. Uh, how I got to, into CTL is um, I got I actually got recommended by my friend uh, who was a fellow last year, Kelly Zhang. <laughs> and um, I mean, I was, I was dubious at first because, you know, I didn't know what to expect. But, you know, I just gave it a shot. <laughs> I just went for it. And here I am today as well. Kylie. <laughs> <laughs> and where are you going to go to school, yeah, do you think? No. Where are you looking at school? Because um, you're a senior, right? Yeah, yeah. So I actually plan to go to um, UH Manoa. Great. So I got, I got accepted. And, um, well, congratulations. <laughs> thank you. And I plan to major. Actually, I'm kind of ambitious right now because I, I, I'm thinking of double majoring in uh, kinesiology and uh, environmental studies. Oh, good. Yeah. So, yeah, env environmental studies kind of um, came from our project. Oh, neat. So cool. it made me more open. Yeah. Yes, you go, Georgia. Well, well, let's talk a little bit about the project because you guys actually are going to be doing a, a production that covers the whole period that you've been working with Rachel mm -hmm. and I on a, at HCAP. But, you know, what are some of the things that struck you about what we're, what we're doing? Because the project overall was to look at a new technology for you, which is hydrogen fuel cell vehicles and how they might impact Hawaii and ultimately maybe to convert a vehicle to run on hydrogen and we didn't actually get the conversion done but we got up to the training to do the conversion yes. and if we can <laughs> keep you around for a couple more weeks we're going to actually do the conversion Ooh. but um but what about the prog program really struck you or surprised you or I mean you felt like you really went a long ways you learned a lot and what are some of the things that you learned when you went when you went through this program um, I think personally, um, 
like I, I didn't know I didn't know anything about hydrogen like I'm honest I, I didn't know anything about hydrogen when I first uh, came into CTL and then you guys just showed up and we're like oh <laughs> we're gonna convert a vehicle <laughs> we're going to convert a vehicle to run on hydrogen yeah. and I didn't even know that hydrogen was um, was that like versatile and yeah. that you can do many things with it mm -hmm. as well as its um, abundance because I thought everything was made out of carbon you know but mm -hmm. you know carbon is not as a uh, universal as hydrogen now that I know because you know hydrogen I learned that can be found in our galaxy in our atmosphere in our water in our organic molecules and right. all of that but then um, with uh, with this project I, I understand that it has a potential in um, the, tra the transportation transportation industry uh, as in especially for the the clean energy clean energy wise because you know you can get hydrogen from like multiple ways mm -hmm. and it has zero emission. All right. How about you, Kylie? Um, coming to this program, just like Giorgio, I had absolutely no knowledge <laughs> <laughs> on any of this. And the fact that we were going to convert a vehicle, I was like, oh my goodness. <laughs> but um, yeah, we have like a really good group that we're working with. So they've definitely helped me kind of like get pushed along and follow along with you guys. And also, um, when we actually got to go to HCAT and like look at the vehicle, see the vehicle. I'm more of a visual learner. Mm. So that's when everything kind of started clicking for me. Because okay. prior to that, I was still very <laughs> confused on the whole process. But yeah, no, definitely it's very interesting. I'm just, it's great to be working <laughs> with everyone. Um, okay, yeah. so, so other than being kind of clean and green, yes. mm -hmm. you know, Giorgio mentioned that's kind of versatile. What are some of the things you learned about hydrogen that, that um, other people might not be aware of that you found interesting? Um, versatile in what different kind of ways you can use it for cooking or you can use it for you know when you're making the hydrogen you're also making oxygen when you use an electrolyzer mm -hmm. and you know what other kind of things did, did you learn mm, I think throughout this process you know we, we kind of had to do our, our own research but mm -hmm. I found out that NASA actually uses um, hydrogen to um, to shoot the rockets up into space. Right, yeah. so it's, it's rocket fuel. Yeah. It's, it's, it's rocket fuel, exceptionally yeah. good. In fact, yeah. it's pretty much the universal fuel is for, uh, yeah. with um, um, uh, hydrox uh, what do you call it, hydrogen peroxide, yeah. and they, they send rockets into the, mm -hmm. out of the atmosphere. A lot of power in there, a lot yeah. of energy. So hydrogen is basically an energy carrier. It's one of the best mm -hmm. energy carriers out there. So, you know, I know we've talked about, you know, we, we can burn hydrogen, and basically all you get is what? Water. water. Yep. <laughs> even if you burn it, even if you literally burn it in a yeah. flame, you get yeah. water. And the Greek, the Greeks name, well, the hydrogen comes from the Greek for water maker. Oh, wow. A lot of oh. people don't know that. But, yeah, it just gives you water back at the end. So even if you burn it or you use it in a fuel cell, you still mm -hmm. get water out yeah. of the tailpipe of the car. So yeah. so a hydrogen vehicle, a lot of people don't realize it's it's really what kind of vehicle. It's it's not an internal combustion engine, but it's... It's an electric vehicle. It's an electric yeah. vehicle. So a lot of people, you know, when they hear a hydrogen vehicle, they're going, oh, it's some new kind of vehicle. But basically, it's an electric vehicle. And, it, and the fuel cell is really just a self-charging... Anything you can think of? Oh, it charges the battery. It's a battery. Yes. It's like a self-charging battery. Because if you look at a fuel cell, it's got a cathode and anode and partitions. And mm -hmm. just like other batteries... And it, but it's neat because it can charge itself with hydrogen and, and oxygen and make electricity. Yeah. So it's really a real basic, basic um, chemistry, and it's been used for a long, yeah. long time. So we started looking at the vehicle, and, and what kind of vehicle did we end up looking at to convert? You well, well, let's let Kylie gem. answer. The gem. gem. Yeah. Is that yeah. it? No, yeah, but the gem, it's a gem. Yeah. yeah. Fourteen hundred LSB. Well. <laughs> Mr. Detail. <laughs> yeah, he's a, yeah, out of the broad idea of it. Yeah, but you've driven it. He hasn't. True. Oh, true, true. So how was, it, how was it to drive the gym? Okay, driving the gym. Um, I, not the same as driving a regular car, that's for sure, because, man, you, like, pressed down on the gas, I would have, like, ran into everyone's cars at HCAT. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it's definitely something different. It's not difficult to drive. I mean, after you start getting used to it. But um, I wouldn't say I, I completely feel comfortable driving it right now. <laughs> <laughs> <Your> practice. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, it's not, yeah, nothing complicated. 
quiet. Yeah, very quiet. It sounds like it's off. Mm -hmm. I know it's you like didn't have much chance to, to really yeah. go very far, but nope. it has a lot of power. <laughs> I mean, you know, we've driven it on the yeah. road, and yeah. it's limited to 25 miles an hour, but it has quite a bit of power. It gets up and goes when you really chomp on that accelerator. Yeah, I was really surprised that yeah. you could drive it to Montgomery Motors. Because mm -hmm. doesn't it only go like 25? Yes, but... <laughs> We got there. So you were just cruising along. <laughs> <laughs> just a couple old people in the wow. yeah. But we got yeah. there. So, you know, what when we, we what are some of the steps we went through? Like first when we started, we were meeting with you um, at the Gold Bond building on mm -hmm. Sundays and we're talking about things and you're really the end product and we'll talk to Julia more about this after the break is the production. So how much how much thought went into, you know, organizing that production and what's your at the end state, what's your goal? When you actually finish your product, your your production, your video, whatever, what is your goal when you finish that? What are you gonna? What is your? What do you want to do? Um, so ultimately, our uh, production is going to serve as a uh, platform for uh, public education, yeah. because um, like yesterday, for example, we went to Mon Montgomery um, Motor, Power, Spo Power, Power Sports, Sports, yeah, and um, some of the. Some of the workers there didn't even know about um, yeah. hydrogen. Mm -hmm. So the people within the industry are not even informed about the alternatives that they can take. So yeah. if we are able to target those type of audiences or even their customers about yeah. more uh, mm -hmm. greener and more sustainable alternatives for transportation, mm -hmm. then uh, we'll definitely have an impact on Hawaii. Yeah. Yeah. And like they said, too, they totally take into account everything that the customers have to say. So, I mean, if you yeah. share the idea with them, they're more than happy to, you know, mm -hmm. actually look into it and maybe make a model out of it. So, it's, yeah. So, have either of you ever made a suggestion someplace and been surprised that people actually listened to your suggestion and, and had it happen? Yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there you go. Yeah. So, yeah. so, do you think that, you know, a high school junior and a high school senior can make a difference in the world. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I think one of the best learning points in this whole program is you realize that, you know, you may just be just be high school kids right now, mm -hmm. but you're stepping up to you're in a leadership program and you're stepping up into the world. But if you have an idea that you think's worth looking at and worth listening to and you've done your homework, you've mm -hmm. done your research, um, people will listen to you because sometimes even People as old as me that have experience need to be smart enough to listen to somebody with a different perspective mm -hmm. or a different viewpoint mm -hmm. and understand the merits of it and say, hey, maybe we should try that. Yeah. So, so I appreciate that you're, you're spending the time doing this, this project and putting the effort in. And I know we'll see more of you as we get into the conversion. Yeah. But for, for right now, we're going to take a quick break and we're going to go to some, uh, some advertising for some of our other shows here on ThinkTech. And we'll get back in about oh, 60 seconds or so. Thank you for watching Think Tech. I'm Grace Chang, the new host for Global Connections. You can find me here live every Thursday at 1 p.m., where we'll be talking to people around the islands or visiting the islands who are connected in various aspects of global affairs. So please tune in and aloha and thanks for watching. I'm Ethan Allen, host of Likeable Science here on Think Tech Hawaii. Every Friday afternoon at 2 p.m., you'll have a chance to come and listen and learn from scientists around the world. Scientists who talk about their work in meaningful, easy to understand ways. And you'll come to appreciate science as a wonderful way of thinking, way of knowing about the world. You'll learn interesting facts, interesting ideas. You'll be stimulated to think more. Please come join us every Friday afternoon at 2 p.m. here on Think Tech Hawaii for Likeable Science with me, your host, Ethan Allen. Aloha. I'm State Senator Russell Ruderman. I represent the Puna and Ka'u District on the Big Island and the host of Ruderman Roundtable. We're here on Think Tech Hawaii every other Tuesday at 2 p.m. You can join us at thinktechhawaii.com. You can find a link there to uh, to a page where you can see past episodes and we talk here about good government, environmental issues, and issues of the day facing the state of Hawaii. I'm Russell Ruderman. Please join us for the Ruderman Roundtable. Mahalo. Hey, welcome back to my lunch hour. Stan, the energy man here. We've done some magic and swapped out Kylie for Julia. And we've got one of the one of the other team members here on this on the screen, and and Julie is really the one that's actually doing the the production. So 
we kind of had her sitting on the sideline watching the production go so she could figure out some of the magic they do here at Think Tech to get, get their productions online. So, Julia, welcome to the show. Hi. Can you tell us a little bit about, you know, school, where you go to school, what you do, what you're going to do after high school and into college? Okay, so I'm in Junior Kaiser High School right now, and I'm not really sure what I'm going to do after high school. Pop, I'm thinking about majoring in communications, but we'll see. It'll probably change. Um, I haven't decided if I want to, like, move to the mainland, like, for college or stay here. It doesn't really matter, but... Mm -hmm. So you're yeah. not like Kylie who wants to bail on us and go all the way back? <laughs> no. I, I mean, like, it would be a good experience to experience the mainland because I haven't really gotten to go. But, I mean, like, Hawaii will always be home for me, so, okay. yeah. Well, being that you're in charge of the, the production part of putting this video and stuff together, what are some of the things you've learned as you as we've gone through the process? Um, I learned that I really need to work with my team <laughs> to like, because I don't know everything. I have to get advice from him and see what we want to have and really coordinate with the whole group to like create something that we all would like. Um, so I'm still like collecting videos and pictures mm -hmm. and trying to put it together and then hopefully we get it done soon. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And do you feel like you can make a difference in Hawaii with this video? That once you finish the production, people go, wow, that's really good. I mean, I never thought of it that way. Um, hopefully, that's our goal. We want to show it to, like, different groups and, like, wide ranges of ages, from, like, high schoolers to adults and seniors. Mm -hmm. So um, hopefully that has an impact and have them have an open mind about hydrogen. Mm -hmm. So who are some of the groups, Georgia, that you plan to talk to? Um, so we are targeting, um, so we're presenting to Kaiser High School on, uh, I believe, Earth Day. Okay. Yeah. And, um, yeah, so we're going to have um, our mini display of the salt water. Oh, salt yeah, water your hydrogen. little cars. Yeah. yeah, the little car. So to, to get a glimpse of, like, what they, um, what they might have in mind, you know, about, like, hydrogen mm -hmm. in general. Or, like, but that, that, that vehicle just basically shows the, the potential of, like, fuel cells in general mm -hmm. and uh, our other audiences will be um, will be the your, your group the Hawaii hydrogen implementation yeah. okay working, working group. group yeah and uh, the legislature are you gonna go talk to any of our legislators um, well that's we're thinking about it we don't know for sure if that's gonna yeah. happen okay but yeah. oh are we also looking at clean energy day which is sometime during the summer okay yeah. so with the Hawaii energy policy forum or yeah. Or yeah, yeah 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 okay all right so is there anything that you really felt like you you learned a lot about in doing this project? I mean, that you didn't expect to learn and and, and really kind of got your attention. Well, for first off, I had no idea anything about hydrogen. I was like, okay, that's something with science. Um, like, what is that exactly? <laughs> but I learned that like to like understand like hydrogen and how it can like produce energy and you can run your cars off it. Like, you don't have to be like a environmentalists to support it. It's not just about saving the environment, it's also being like... Um, it's a practical thing. Yeah, it's a yeah. practical thing. You don't have to like, oh, it's just going to save the earth. It's more than just like hoping the earth, it will cut down in cost hopefully, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> and then it helps with all, a lot of different stuff too. Yeah, so you guys got a chance to see our little Millennium Rain um, hydrogen unit and you saw some of our like the weapons loader and yeah. We, yeah, yeah. we got to talk about all that. What do you think of those guys from US Hybrid that do our conversions that they seem pretty knowledgeable about about the equipment that they worked on and stuff? Yeah definitely. Yeah, they're <laughs> I mean yeah. they, they also seem very passionate about it and um, what, what's the Asian guy's name? But I remember, like, he showed us. Um, yeah, he he showed us inside the bus how it works, mm -hmm. yeah. and you know he also showed us. Um, he dismounted the um, the weapons loader and then yeah, showed us cool. the insides, the, the where the fuel cell is and where the yeah and where the the tank is, the hydrogen okay. tank and all of that. Yeah, yeah. so you got to see all the components that on the conversion that mm -hmm. we're gonna do, and so like on our gem vehicle, all that stuff will actually sit on the back. Yep. Um, but we have a tank, and we have a fuel cell, and we have a, a battery controller that tells the fuel cell when to feed the batteries and charge them and yeah. when to turn it off, because you don't want to overcharge the batteries. That would be and, bad. Yeah, and then there's some 
plumbing to connect the, the tank to the yep. fuel cell and some wires to connect everything else. But it's pretty a pretty basic conversion. It's nothing you would think that, um, oh, we're, we're converting a vehicle to run on hydrogen. It'd be like rocket science. We're building you know, a <laughs> spacecraft or something. But it's really pretty basic. It's, um, in fact, from my perspective, it's, it's probably easier. It's on the par of working on a lawnmower or something. It's really not that complicated. It's, <clears throat> it's less complicated than working on a car. So, were there any big surprises though for you in the program that, you know, it's like that just went, oh my gosh, I had no idea that, you know, I could learn this much or I could do this or, or that could make a difference or whatever? Well, first off, like, I'm not really like, huge in science. Like, I'm not really good at it. I like it, but I'm not good at it. <laughs> so, when I heard we're converting uh, like a car and to run on off of hydrogen, that freaked me out. <laughs> but, I, but once I started to learn about the process and what you can do and I realized it wasn't as, like you said, not as complicated as it sounds. Mm -hmm. It's not rocket science. Yeah, I know, because I used to fly airplanes, <clears throat> and when people would look in my in the cockpit of my fighter or mm -hmm. something, and they'd go, oh my God, how do you know how what all those switches are and everything? <laughs> and it's really what we call eating the elephant one bite at a time. You just basically have to learn about the engines, and then you have to learn about the radios, and then you have to learn about the, this, and, the, and you learn them separately, and they make sense. Yeah. And then you put them all together. And it's the same with the conversion. It's like once you learn what the fuel cell does and you learn about the controller and you learn what, how the tank has to feed yeah. the it makes sense. It's, the pieces make it's sense. Like one step at a time. Exactly. And so that's a good way to learn a, a real complex task is you just break it down into separate components and learn those components individually and put them together. So, yeah, that's kind of what we we're trying to do. Rachel and I were trying to show yeah. you that it may sound like a real daunting task. You're going to convert a vehicle to run the hydrogen. <laughs> but... You break it down into its individual components, and, and it's yeah. you can do it. Anybody can do it. It just takes a little bit of uh, reading and yeah. research, and you can get you it just done. Just watch some YouTube videos. <laughs> That's what I did. Yeah. So do you think that this technology could really make a difference in Hawaii? Do you think that the people in Hawaii are ready to accept hydrogen fuel cell vehicles, or is, is that the goal of your production, to convince a million people in Hawaii that hydrogen fuel cell vehicles are the way to go or um, I think we will, maybe they'll like have everybody convert it all at once but I want people to be a little bit more open about the idea of it and to like welcome in to have it um, more implicated in Hawaii so that we can ha start having um, what's it called? the charge fuel hydrogen um, chargers, charging stations charging yeah. stations so that would be awesome okay yeah. So you saw in the in HCAT we have we had the gem vehicle, mm -hmm. we had the weapons loader, we had the big buses. So, what other kind of equipment do you think would be good to maybe run hydrogen off of, off of hydrogen? Um, I think motorcycles <laughs> yeah. in the future sometimes could yeah. because um, you know yesterday we went to Montgomery um, uh, Power Sports mm -hmm. and they were mentioning how motorcycles are more um, more like easier to drive. It's like you can, you know, pass you can put more of them on yeah. the highway for sure yeah, than yeah, cars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Less traffic. So less traffic, less pollution, <laughs> and you know, if you can make a cool-looking one, then mm -hmm. people will be attracted to it. Because yeah. one of the factors that uh, customers look at is uh, how attractive it is. You know. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah, yeah. Don't, let's talk about the interview with the folks at Montgomery yesterday. Um, I think they learned a lot from you. Like, in <laughs> fact, they could tell from their response a lot of times they felt like they learned a lot. But you guys learned a, a lot about business and marketing yesterday. Yeah. So the the um, I mean Kylie even mentioned, you know, you got to listen to customers. You know, that yeah. was I think that was a big. I saw your guys' light bulbs come on behind you. I could see the little light bulbs <laughs> come on. In your head. But you know, the cu the companies react to customer input. So you know, for you as customers, you know, you know that you can write. Chevrolet or Ford Motor Company or BMW or whoever and say, hey, I, I want to see a hydrogen fuel cell pickup truck. And if you do it and 10 other people do it and then five more people do it from here and there, you might see that thing. But if nobody asks for it, they're, they're not, they may not think of it. So that's an important thing you learned yesterday was, you know, as a customer, you have a responsibility to help build a market in whatever it is you think is important. So. I know they talked a little bit about the electric motorcycles. What, what impressed you about about their discussion on the electric motorcycle? Um, well, I think something that impressed me was that, um, I mean, they they had it in their um, market for a really long time because people didn't really like 
um, well, know about it that much. Yeah. yeah. And it was so. too expensive. Yep, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. It was expensive. So the affordability. But you know, our technology is, our technology's potential is growing like exponentially. So, <laughs> hopefully, within the next few years, ten or twenty years, maybe, yeah. then everything is going to be affordable. I mean, if we look at Tesla, for example, their Model Three um, is going to be like thirty-five thousand dollars. So that's pretty cheap for an electric vehicle. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So. So, and that's pretty much a trend that you'll see in any technology. The more it gets into the marketplace, the cheaper yeah. it gets. The more the, the yeah. more competitive it is, and the more people making it or competing with each other, the price goes it's down. down. Yeah. So that's that's one of the things you like to see. So yeah, they had to drop their what did they say ten thousand like dollars. Half, half. Yeah. So it's twenty thousand. <laughs> drop it to ten thousand. To get it to sell, to yeah. get it about the same yeah. price as another comparable motorcycle. Mm -hmm. But in reality, it was actually a very powerful and high-speed machine. It was really yeah. a, a very high-performing motorcycle, and probably worth the twenty thousand. But you got to wait till the market gets there, and you actually you can actually start marketing it at the yeah. right price. So, well, is there anything else that stood out to you about what you learned in this process um, that, that that you'd like to share with everybody? I think for me is uh, the importance of. Uh, sustainability and like yeah. the in-state economy because I feel like hydrogen will have um, opportunities to create more jobs for people because if we for, for example make like um, hydrogen electrolysis stations or something then the people who build it they can make some money mm -hmm. and people uh, will operate yeah it people will it. operate it and uh, I think that's gonna help us um, help the state the state's economy because right now if we keep purchasing fossil fuels and stuff from other places then our money is going elsewhere and it's not it's not really coming back yeah. Yeah. But exactly if we're able, right. yeah so if we're able to generate um, our own um, economy you know keep with, the money in Hawaii yeah yeah, yeah. then we keep the money yeah because if you're buying your energy from somewhere else when it's falling around from the sky and the wind is blowing it you're wasting your money you I know, know right yeah. and I well, think another another thing is that um, that we actually have, I think, the most expensive, um, most the highest price of gasoline in the country, only because of um, because of importation. Yeah, so we got to yeah. ship it to Hawaii. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Better so price. If we're able to, you know, implement hydrogen here, then we can po possibly make a big change in our economy. Great. Well, believe it or not, we've just gone through a half hour of talking to Center for Tomorrow's leaders. Yeah. So. <laughs> Thanks to Kylie over in the back and, and Giorgio <laughs> and Julia for being here with us today. And we really enjoyed, I know I'm speaking for Rachel too, but I, know, I have her permission. We really enjoyed working with you guys and we're not done yet. We still got yeah. plenty of work to do. So we'll be working with you some more and uh, we'll have you back on when the project's all done. Maybe we can show your video. Does that sound oh, good? maybe. Okay. Well, that's it for us today on Standard Energy Man. I thank you very much for joining us and uh, until next Friday, aloha. <laughs>